Welcome back to 30 Days of Photoshop. Today, we're showing you how to edit your raw landscape images in Photoshop. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, we are showing you how to edit your raw images in Photoshop. And better yet, we're gonna be using a landscape photo. This is something I took in San Francisco not too long ago, actually in the hills right above San Francisco. It's a really, really cool mountainous area and the fog is relatively low lying. So around sunset, I had the camera on a tripod and captured some light trails of cars and some fog rolling in. So just a couple little issues with the image straight out of camera. The foreground is just a little bit too dark and the sky was just a little bit too light. And I wanna add more emphasis on the light trails of the car. So we're gonna do all that in our raw editor in Photoshop. So first we wanna go ahead and open our image. You can actually download this on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. Let's go ahead and hit open. Now, anytime you open a raw image, it always opens in camera raw. So this is Adobe camera raw. There we go. And here we have access now, if you guys have used Lightroom or Bridge, you'll notice these sliders here on the right probably look pretty familiar. We have things like exposure adjustment, contrast adjustment, highlight shadows, things like that. Now let's go ahead, I'm gonna just reset this. There we go, camera raw defaults, we'll reset everything. And I have a couple decisions that I wanna make. First, I actually, I know that I wanna crop this image because kind of the more interesting part is right here in the center. So I'm gonna crop that in Photoshop, but mostly I just wanna make sure that like this part of the image is uh, looks good. So let's go ahead and start off by bringing up our shadow level just a little bit. There we go. And as I bring this up, you're gonna see it's gonna, it's gonna get the foreground and the background, but actually I'm deciding here, like this area, these hills and things like that, I don't really want those to be much brighter. I kind of want just these dark trees to be a little bit brighter. So what we're gonna do, instead of just taking these uh, sliders which affect the entire image, we can actually use our tools up here at the top. There's an adjustment brush, graduated filter, and a radial filter. Now again, you'll have access to these in Lightroom as well. So if you prefer Lightroom as your raw editor, you can totally do this and still follow along in Lightroom. So I'm gonna go to my adjustment brush, and what this allows me to do is simply paint in the areas that I want to change. So let's go ahead and start painting this in. Now it's gonna start bringing up my exposure. There we go. And let's just go make sure that all my settings are okay. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and bring up our flow. There we go. All right. So everywhere I paint, we're bringing up our exposure. There we go. And I want to make sure I get these trees back there. Just basically adding a little bit more information to all these dark, dark areas. Okay. And I'll do the same thing with these trees over here. Okay. Now you can see I'm not being very uh, <laughs> precise about where I'm painting, but that's not a big deal because I'm going to use a relatively new feature called range masking. And what this does is it allows me to make this only visible in the lighter areas or the darker areas. Now, in this case, I just want it to be visible in the darker areas. So I'm gonna take this range mask and go to luminance, and I'm gonna pull this away from the light areas. And you can see it's just gonna pull them right away from the light areas, making them just visible in the darks. There we go. And you can change your smoothness here as well. We'll go ahead and bring that smoothness down a little bit there. All right, and come right to right about there. Okay. Well, that's looking pretty good. Now, I'm gonna go back to our erase and just erase aware, away a couple areas where it's maybe just a little bit too bright. But all in all, we've done a really nice job bringing up the exposure. So let's go ahead and bring this up and down again. You can see it's just targeting those trees, which is incredibly cool. Okay, let's go ahead and create a new uh, adjustment layer here, or, or rather a new adjustment. I'm gonna bring the exposure up and I'm gonna bring my color temperature up as well. And this time I just wanna kind of lighten this area here right around the little car trail. Okay, maybe we'll pop in a little bit of magenta as well. There we go. Nice, looking really good. So basically I have my brush controls here at the bottom, but you can use your open and close brackets to make your brush larger or smaller as well. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our before and our after. So here on the left, you can see the before 
relatively dark in these areas after it's getting lighter. We still have a ways to go. So let's just go back to our single view. Now, the next thing I wanna do is just bring more information into my sky. So we're gonna grab a new adjustment brush. There we go. Let's go ahead and make our brush a bit larger. And I'm gonna start painting this over top of our sky and the clouds and things like that. Isn't that cool how you have the sky and then these like clouds and then a little bit more mountains sticking out? This is um, on Mount Tam, by the way, uh, right outside of San Francisco. All right, so let's go ahead and bring all these numbers back down to zero. And now I'm gonna to start to bring my exposure down a little bit. But as I do this, ooh, that's looking really cool. As I do this, I want this to just be visible on the lighter areas. So again, we're gonna to go to our range mask, gonna to go to luminance, and I'm gonna say, don't be visible in the darker areas. There we go, just the lighter areas. Fantastic. And so you can see that we still have our nice exposure on the trees, but this is looking a little bit darker. All right, let's go ahead and add, add another one. I love this adjustment brush because it really just lets me like paint in the areas that I want to be lighter or darker. And because we're in a raw editor, we have so much control. So now let's go ahead, I'm gonna warm up the temperature and bring up our exposure a little bit. Let's really bring our, uh, sorry, feathering is up. We're gonna really bring our flow way down. And I wanna kind of paint in on some of these clouds. Just kind of lightening some of these clouds up here in the background giving us a little bit more interest. So with a really low flow, you can get a result that looks really nice and natural. The higher your flow goes, the less natural this is gonna get. And there we go. And then here, I can just continue to adjust this as we want. All right, and maybe add a little magenta there as well. All right, maybe it was just a little bit down there too. Oh, that's looking really good. All right, let's go ahead and add a new layer because I want even more glow from right here. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna bring this back down to zero. My exposure up looks good there. Okay, we're just gonna bring our flow up now because I, I want like a lot of glow here. There we go. Maybe I'll hold Alt or Option if I wanna bring up my eraser and just erase it away a little bit there. Fantastic. Okay, now you have this little overlay uh, thing that you can check on and off to see your before and after. This is looking good. I just wanna darken the, the hillside a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a new uh, brush again. And by the way, you can use uh, graduated filters and radial filters. I'll show you how to do this in just a second. But for me, the brush is nice because you can just paint it in exactly where you want and then still use your range mask to limit it to either the highlights or the shadows. Okay, and then here we go. Now we're painting with a new new adjustment brush. Okay, so I just wanna darken this hillside a little bit because it's just a little bit light and the darker this goes, the lighter the, the like road area is gonna look in comparison. There we go. And I can continue painting up here, but I'm, I'm gonna wind up cropping this image anyway. There we go. So you can see I'm really, I'm not necessarily just trying to make everywhere perfectly exposed. I'm trying to create a focal point uh, in this image. Okay, now we can zoom in by hitting Controller Command Plus a couple times. Okay, and then I'm gonna hold Alt or Option to minus out a little bit. Okay, so we don't, affect these areas here because it wasn't looking that great. You can use your range masking here as well if you need to. To have it just be visible in either only the highlights or only the shadows. All right. Yeah, that's looking really cool. All right, let's go ahead and make a new one of these because I actually want to bump up our exposure a little bit more on these clouds. So again, I wanna bring my flow way, way, way down, like a flow of four actually looks pretty good. Let's bring our exposure up and then just a couple little hits there here on the top. And then, perfect. Then I'm gonna go back to my range masking, go back to luminance, I'm gonna say don't be visible in the dark areas, just the lights, okay? So it's gonna restrict it even more to just my light areas. And you can see what a difference that makes, right? 
So here's the before. It's, you see it's showing up here in the dark areas. It just kind of looks like I just painted that on. And as I bring my luminance range to not include the darks, there we go. It's just including the lights. And this is very similar to blend if in, in Photoshop, by the way. There we go. And just start to work on my lights. That's fantastic. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the before and after. We have a few different ways to view this, but uh, as far as, well, let's do a top to bottom split. There we go. So um, there we go. Just a regular before and after with the top to bottom. So here we can see our before. Let's go ahead and hide this overlay. But here's the before uh, where we have all this information. The foreground's a little bit too dark. This is a little bit too light. I mean, the exposure looks okay, but uh, here in the after, we're creating a little bit more of like a stylized, uh, stylized piece. All right. There we go. Now, a little bit more here, I wanna go ahead and add our uh, radial filter. So we're gonna click here in the center and drag this out, okay? And go ahead and just bring up our exposure. <laughs> Not that far. There we go, somewhere around there. I'm gonna go ahead and range mask this to only be visible in my highlights. There we go. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and hide that overlay so we can see what that does. That's looking really cool. All right, and now I'm gonna grab my graduated filter and we're gonna go from the top down, okay, with the graduated filter. Let's go ahead and bring everything back to zero and we'll bring our exposure down a little bit there. Now, if you wanna just see a quick before and after, you can hit the letter P on your keyboard for preview. So here's our before and the after. So P for preview, before and the after. You can see we've like actually created a glow right around here. The sky looks super intense. There we go. And we can kind of compare this image. Now, if there's anything that you're like, I'm not sure, like that graduated filter, I might've made a little too dark. Just click back on the graduated filter and you can adjust your exposure. I might make that a little bit more blue even. Okay, there we go. We'll go back to our hand tool. And I think overall we could just brighten up the, uh, brighten up our exposure just a little bit. Okay. And let's go ahead and bring in a little bit more vibrance as well. I'm keeping in mind that like really the center part of the image is what I'm interested in. Let's go back to our adjustment brush here. There we go. We'll just turn this overlay on and we'll see. Maybe I just bumped up my exposure a little bit too bright there. There we go. So you can see all this. We have so much control over what we're doing. Okay, that's the trees and then the rest of the land. Okay, well, I think this looks really nice. So again, let's just turn this off. P, there's the before and the after. Of course, I'm stylizing this a little bit. This is specifically for this image because we had that like light glow in there. I really wanted that to be the focal point of the photo. Um, normally I might go a little bit less process with the landscape photograph, but in this case, I kind of like it. Okay. Well, this is looking really good. Let's go ahead and grab our crop tool. So C for the crop tool, okay? Now, my aspect ratio, I actually wanna be a four by five. That's a really nice vertical aspect ratio for Instagram, for instance, okay? Let's go ahead and straighten out our horizon here. All right, let's just bring this in just a little bit. Okay, I wanna center up that island. Good deal. Now, when you're cropping, just make sure where it says delete crop pixels, make sure that's unchecked because uh, we don't want to permanently delete this stuff. Like if I want to change my crop later, uh, I can do that very easily. There we go. Yeah, like here, I think I actually do want to crop in a bit. So let's go ahead and crop in. There we go. We're getting a nice. Uh, that's looking really nice, actually. We're getting a nice. Um, ratio here. So we have a, a two to three ratio. So when you're cropping, you see these lines here, this is called the rule of thirds. You can obviously do whatever you want, but one good way to think about the rule of thirds is like if you're doing landscapes to have like two thirds of your image be land and then one third be sky or the opposite, two thirds be sky, one third be land. And generally you wanna place things of interest in either one of these corners. But if you have such a center, uh, such a focal point right in the center of your photo, 
then you want to just get that centered. All right, cool. That's actually looking really good. There was a tiny bit of a distraction there on the left hand side. And I need to straighten my horizon a little bit more. There we go. And all of this is subjective. So if you're looking at this and you're like, I would have cropped it differently, that's totally cool. You can definitely crop it differently if you want to do that. But I think that looks really, really nice. So we've gotten rid of a lot of the stuff that just wasn't that interesting in the photo and brought a lot of interest into this image. Now, if you're looking at this and you're like, ah, that area is just a little bit too bright, you can always just double click right here on your layer, uh, on the actual uh, layer thumbnail. And you can go in here and change. Let's go ahead and bring our highlights down a little bit. Okay, I'll do that over here too. We'll bring our highlights down a little bit and hit OK. And it'll automatically update our smart object because we opened this as a smart object. So it's going to automatically update the smart object, bring it back into Photoshop with those highlights recovered. All right, you can see it just takes one second here. Fantastic. Almost done. And there we go. Now we have an image. Look at that. We've got back so much of our highlight information. Now, in this case, it was a pretty long exposure. So we have some like airplanes and things like that flying around in the sky. What I'm going to do is just create a new layer. We're going to go to our spot healing brush tool. And I'm just going to spot heal these out. Sometimes these actually can look really cool. Um, you know, if this is like the type of thing that you're going for. Uh, but in this case, I don't know, like that one is it's just got a bunch of like beeps in it and stuff like that. And it's not exactly what we're going for. I, I think it is more distracting than anything else in this particular photo. But sometimes light trails and things like that can actually be really cool. Well, like in the foreground, we have cars making light trails. There we go. And the camera was on a tripod for this, by the way. That's how we're able to get away with a long exposure like this. All right. There we go. Check that out. Look at all that fog trailing over the mountaintop. We've got bright, bright lights coming in through the trees. Really nice focal point. And we've got detail in our trees. Yeah, this is looking really, really nice. Well, there we have it. Our photo completely done and ready to go. Edited in Adobe Camera Raw. Thank you so much for watching this episode. We're almost done with our 30 days of Photoshop. Join us tomorrow. We're going to show you how to replace a sky in a landscape image. Thanks again. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone.